All right, so this week we're going to be talking about rear end gearing. On this 74 Duster 360, we have a Chrysler eight and a quarter rear end. Let's talk about how this works. So the way that this works is we have your input side here, which is coming off of your drive shaft. So your drive shaft is, is turning here and that is directly connected to your pinion gear, which, yeah, you see that in the back there, that is your pinion gear. The pinion gear then turns the ring gear. So the ring gear moves as I, as I turn this over, it's turning your ring gear. Now your ring gear in turn through a few other connections is providing the rotation to your tires. These two are a matched set. So they sell these in all different configurations. These are basically machined so that the teeth go together. This is an eight and a quarter inch rear end. What does that mean? So that actually means that the diameter of this ring gear is eight and a quarter inches. So the gear ratio, we got 323s, 350s, 410s, people throw out all these numbers. And what does that mean? Well, what that means is it's the ratio of the ring gear to the pinion gear. The number of teeth here divided by the number of teeth there is the ratio. All right, so how do you know what gear ratio you're running on your car? So there's, there's two ways to do this. There is a tag attached on the outside of the cover plate and uh, to one of the bolts. And this tag actually tells you what the ratio is. So it's 2.94 to one. I think it makes sense to verify. So the way that we're gonna do that, we're putting a paint pen mark. We're gonna start with our ring gear and we're marking one tooth. Now we're just gonna count teeth. So we go around one, two, three, five, 46, 47 teeth. Now we do the same thing on our pinion gear. So I got a little mark on there and we're gonna turn it around and see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 teeth. So we take those two numbers ring gear divided by pinion gear and we get 2.9375 or basically 2.94. What happens is this ratio, the higher numbers, give you more effective power at the wheels. So you have basically a longer lever arm mechanically with the higher gear ratio. So right now 2.96 to 1 means I have to turn over the engine or transmission, basically my input side has to turn over 2.94 times to get one rotation of the tires. In 410 gears, it means that I gotta turn 4.10 times to get one rotation of the tires. And that gives you more power, but unfortunately it gives you uh, downsides of reduced top speed and also poor fuel economy. All right, so I set up a little example here on a road bike that just helps demonstrate what that leverage principle and the gearing high to low does for you. I am the engine and I'm gonna basically try to get this thing up to speed. So here we are demonstrating low gears and we're getting up to speed. So here we go. It takes me a while to get up to speed because of that lower torque, but I can achieve a very high speed with this gear ratio. All right, so now I shifted to the highest back gear. So this represents a high number of gearing. So more like if you had four tens or something on there. All right, so what you can see here is I can get oh, a little bit of a wheelie there. I can get going 
really fast. But then my engine here starts being the limiter. I can't get going that that's the fastest I can physically turn it. And that's not nearly as fast. Again here, takes a little more effort. But you can put out a much higher speed. You can accelerate faster with big gears. You can achieve a much higher top speed with little gears. So what does this mean? Are, uh, are little gears good? Are, are big gears good? It really depends on what you're trying to do. 294, we'll call it three gearing versus a 410, call it four gearing, is 30% increase. And this is functionally, I mean, the engine power is not changing. So that engine is 300 horsepower that gives me a, call it X amount of power at the wheels. By going to 410 gearing or four gearing, I'm getting a 30% power improvement at the wheels. But it comes at the cost of a much lower top speed and a much worse gas mileage. So these things we can, we can kind of calculate. The gas mileage, I'm not as concerned about because this is really just for, for you know, weekend cruising, but uh, the top speed, that is definitely important. We wanna make sure that we balance whatever gears that we have for what we wanna do. All right, so it's pretty easy to calculate theoretical top speed and show the impacts of gear ratio changes and how the um, fuel economy is impacted. So let's run through this real quick and it's easy to, to duplicate this on your own. But top speed, and this is theoretical top speed, you're not gonna achieve this exact number because there are losses in the system, um, but this is the best way to calculate it. So top speed is equal to engine max RPM. So in the case of the duster, we're at 5,500 RPM. Um, the times your one over your transmission gear ratio. And this is a three speed torque flight transmission. And the way that I've broken this out is first, first, second, third. And I have the ratios here of my first speed ratio is a 2.45 and then a 1.45 second. And then it's a one to one on the third gear. And then we do one over your rear end ratio. So again, on oh, uh, typo here, 2.94 is our rear end ratio. So that's the gearing that we just looked at. Then we multiply that by your tire circumference, uh, which is pi times your diameter of your tire. So for me, I have 24.5 inch tires, uh, which gives me a 76.96 blah, blah, blah circumference. But I can just hide that for now. Um, all right, and then you're gonna get a speed. And if you do this last piece, it's gonna convert it to the right units for you. Otherwise, you're getting speed in inches per minute, and we don't want that. So by doing 60 over 12 to you know 12 inches in a foot, and then 5,280 feet in a mile, this will get you into miles per hour, which is the units that we wanna be in. If you look at everything for the duster, the way that it's set up today, you have theoretical top speeds of 56 in first gear, 94 in second gear, and 136 in third gear. So what we can do is we can just play around with these numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to duplicate this down here and then I'm gonna change my gear ratio here to let's say I went with the 410s, the, uh, you know, the drag gears. What would happen? I would get 
basically a hundred horsepower increase as far as the the wheels go right so the engine power doesn't change but with that extra leverage i'm getting effectively the same power as if i had put another hundred horsepower into the engine so that gives me a lot more power but you can see here it drops my speed significantly so now because the engine can only turn at 5500 rpm and the uh the top gear is staying the same on the transmission so we change now our rear end gear to the the 4.1 and our top speed is now only 97 miles an hour which kind of sucks i'm thinking we need a little bit more top speed than that so that is the downside all right so the other downside is fuel economy now why does fuel economy get impacted the engine does not care what you have behind it necessarily for for this example the engine doesn't care what you have behind it and it doesn't care what gear ratio you have but by changing the tire size or the gear ratio or the transmission ratio we are effectively making the engine have to work less or more depending on what that ratio changes so what we're going to do here is we're going to say 70 miles an hour cruising so what happens if you just have to drive across town and you're going to go 70 miles an hour so the easiest way to do this is we're going to use our what if analysis here so i'm going to go data i'm going to go what if analysis i'm going to do goal seek and I'm going to change my speed mile per hour in top gear. I'm going to change that to value 70. So 70 miles an hour. And I'm going to do that by changing cell my engine RPM, right? So now what I'm calculating is in top gear, I have to go 2,800 RPM. The engine's turning 2,800 RPM to cruise at 70 miles an hour seems reasonable i'm going to do the same thing down here on my 410 gears so i'm going to do goal seek i'm going to do uh 70 and i'm going to do that by changing my engine rpm again and now you see that with 410 gears i would be my engine now has to work at 3900 has to turn over at 3900 rpm to deliver the same 70 mile per hour cruise so you get a lot more power, but now my engine just cruising along is working harder. So to deliver the same speed, the engine has to work harder. And that's where the fuel economy uh, gets crushed. So your engine, you're going to spend a lot more gas at 3,900 than you are at 2,800. So not good for going cross country but and not good for necessarily drag racing because i have a 97 mile per hour limit on these so what do we do well the first option is we compromise so instead of 410 gears we do maybe we do 3.55s so i've seen this option for sale 3.55s that gets me at 112 miles per hour max speed that's quite a bit more than 97 and it still gives me a significant improvement in power because I'm going from I'm, I'm basically taking half or a little more than half of the uh, the power boost that I would get from the 410 so basically you know call it a 55 horsepower virtual horsepower improvement at the wheels pretty good and it doesn't hurt me as much on the top end and it won't hurt me as much on the fuel economy either the other thing that we can do depending on what your budget is so I'm gonna move these back to 410 gears and you know if 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 I can afford to do this um, what I would like to do is take our third our three-speed torque flight and maybe we replace that with a four-speed torque flight and then what we can do is we get an overdrive gear that let's call it 70. I think that's what I've seen on some of them. So now if I have a, a four speed torque flight, I can still have the same big power gain at the wheels, 
but with this extra overdrive transmission gear, I can um, get my top speed back up in the high numbers. And let's just go through real quick and do our goal seek number to value my 70 by changing the engine max. And I am able to bring down actually even lower my my 70 mile per hour idle would be or it would be lower so i would i would effectively be an overall better setup by adding a fourth gear it's not cheap though you got to buy a transmission so i don't know if we're going to do that or not but this would be my dream setup for this car is to be able to add a fourth gear and then to be able to put in some big 410 gears or something to get that power on the backside. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, like, subscribe, comment below, and we will see you next time.